What have I got myself into now? It's going to be bad, right? Now, notice Earl Hedner, he's going to lock the whole thing from inside. There's going to be a camera guy in there as well. And obviously, Sean, Hunter, they can't, you know, they're, they're going to be no no way that they can get in there. I love this because it really showed, even though Sean's the heel, like, he is panicked. Like, normally the heel always has the upper hand, but, I mean, in this, this is, you know this is not going to end well for Sean. You know, no matter what happens here, this is not going to end well. And I love the fact they're selling the fact that you can't break into it. There's no way. Um, and and they did a very good job storytelling wise of doing that for me. Um, no doubt about it. Like just just ingenious the way they they booked this. Um, overall, in my opinion. As we see the Undertaker, look at that, just <laughs> already taking it. So we see, you notice that there are camera guys in there. Look at that. I guess they, they maybe WWF thought mm, we can't shoot it like this all the time, like from the hard cam, but I don't know, there's something about that that makes it feel although the way they shoot here because they're looking up i guess you do get that that um atmosphere of you know slightly being trapped inside so maybe there is some some you know goodness to come of it Shawn michaels the ultimate seller in so many ways obviously dolph ziggler would take a lot of this up that's for sure um never always the uh the best stuff Shall we say? But it's going to be... Look at that. Sean just spitting out. It's going to be a cat and mouse type stuff going on. From what I can remember. And now this is one of the ones... Um, I spoke a lot about videotapes on here. From my collections, this is one of the shows that I watched live. I was able, fortunate enough to watch it live. Because um, I had uh, Sky back by this time. And uh, I'd stayed up this night. I was completely knackered by the next night. I had like, school. Uh, obviously in the UK, you know, this is like starting at 1. This would have been about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I didn't have much sleep, that's for sure. But uh, I was so buzzing after this that it really didn't matter. I was fine. And sometimes when you're a kid, you know, like energy levels, it's just totally different to now. If I had like work the next day, there's no way I could do it. Just, just no chance at all. Just goes to show you how, like, you know, things rapidly change. And seeing the Undertaker, here we go. Bit of old school. I mean, is this old school here? I'm not too sure. He did this a lot. I don't think it. You know, this sort of thing was was considered that here. But an amazing to see a guy that size do like that. That kind of thing. I think people just expect it sometimes. They think, oh, that, that's the easy thing to do. It ain't. Not for a guy that size. See Undertaker just literally methodically taking this guy. Now, interestingly, I mean, the crowd at this point, obviously, they've never seen anything like this, but most of this event has been hyping this because you've got this massive, great, bloody thing above the arena. So it would have been very hard for the fans to not be thinking about what that match was going to be like, what was going to happen. Um, because it's just it's it's ever present, if if you will, um, which is which is you know um, such a massive part. I mean, I I don't. It makes me curious to know how, say, this match or you know the concepts was ever thought out. How long in advance they knew they were going to do this? Because this isn't something you can just go, you know, a week out or a month out evening and just go right. Just make us make us this concept and that's it 
So it goes to show how far in advance the booking would have been. Um, but I love the fact that that's this is the case. You know that this is a this is that sort of thing. Um, just pretty amazing, really. I sort of talk about it a lot, but you know, it is it is pretty um, pretty amazing when you think about it. See the Undertaker. This is a just such a good selling job here of Sean being absolutely punished. Look at that. <laughs> and I like the I like the atmosphere with the live camera sort of <laughs> look at that. It's just pulling him down. But I love the the idea of the camera got getting in the way and it not looking so sharp and clear because it just brings uh, a real interesting vibe to it like you're really in it whereas today I think like everything's too perfect like they probably not they probably edit it out on the network or something and not have it stay in but I love the fact that you know it is what it is and so I think at this point like you know we're understanding the concept of the match at the same time as we're watching this because we, we've never seen one of these before. But my takeaway watching this live, because I can remember quite vividly, um, my friend was a massive Shawn Michaels fan and I, he absolutely loved this. You know, he really thought Shawn would very much showcase his skills by, you know, taking the punishment and selling it, making it look good. That's what um, he liked about about this match. But, you know, we're, we're sort of learning at the same time. And, and the big thing at this early stage I remember just thinking about was just the fact that they could, they can walk around outside the ring and then use, like, the cell as, as an advantage. And there's no way Sean can just run off um, after he's done it. So it's just going to keep getting gruelling. Oh, man. Nice reversal there. I'm interested to know if there's anybody listening to this or doing the watch along for the first time. This is the first time I've seen this match. Like, what your thoughts are coming out of it? Because, you know, I guess a lot of people might tune into this just because of the whole boneyard thing and see Undertaker here. Like, it, it's not the same at all type of thing. This is a completely different, unique style match, but. Again, take nothing away from it. This is going to be a, you know, it's its own concept. This is a, but it's a different era. It's a slower era, but one that I enjoyed more because, as I always keep saying, selling was very much still a, a big thing here. Look at that. Taker just laying it in thick. Now, Taker wasn't really, you know, he was not doing like the MMA stuff that he brought in at this point, but he still had very, very good um, ways of like making the punches look real, I felt. Still good, in my opinion. He was very good at doing that. Now we see Undertaker just literally pulling Shawn Michaels apart. Absolutely crazy. Um, just some, just some. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> I love Shawn's reaction. His face. He's getting clumped. Um, this was from St. Louis, Missouri, this year. Um, attendance twenty one thousand. One one hundred and fifty-one. The buy rate uh, for this um, two hundred and forty thousand um, on this one. So, uh, and of course, we was a month out here from the the um, screw job. Of course, that, that came very much after this. Um, you know, and I guess you can you can imagine how well we know how all that went. Obviously. Uh, after that, no doubt about it. 
to see if there's anything else worth looking at in terms of this um, this event. Just uh, seeing if there's anything good. Not not so much really, other than uh, oh, look at that. You can get some first bit of colour now in the blood, I think. The reaction to this was, was really good, though. Like, I remember, like, you know, sometimes you can you have to go back and appreciate things more. This was one of those things where, like, the crossover was instant. People, after seeing this, just wanted more. And I really think that this lit a fire to do more stuff like this. Um... And of course, the next Hell in a Cell after this was in 98, it would be at King of the Ring. So it wasn't like, you know, they even waited like 12 months for the next one. Like this obviously had people speaking and, and thinking we want to see it again. And obviously one of the wrestlers that definitely was looking at this as an opportunity was Mick Foley. Because for Mick, this was going to be a, a very exciting prospect. I'd mentioned earlier about the rivalry he had with, with Mankind. So... Just imagine, um, you know, re, re-picking up that feud and, and bringing this concept into it. You know, it's, it's, it was a big thing at the time for Foley because um, he, you know, he could have easily, although he was an amazing worker and fantastic in WCW as well, but he could have easily got lost in this shuffle, um, no doubt about it. So he very much needed that second run. With Undertaker to be locked in that feud. No doubt about it. And this was the cool thing I remember when I was watching this live. Is that I was thinking like. Oh, so Sean going down was like. What if Sean could just like climb up for a little while. And just hang about. Like what would happen with the Undertaker go chasing him. Or like could they climb on the sides. Um, because unlike a traditional cage match. The, the cage bars they were a lot smaller. The holes were smaller. So um it was it was tough to work out if that was a thing. I just envisioned it like a steel cage match just with a roof. But then when I saw it, I was like, hmm, it's not quite the same. Now, later in years, this those style cage like that become a, a, a just a thing. Like the, All the cages looked like that. Um, back in the very early days in the NWA, all the cages were literally that style, but it was WWF, and you've only got to go back to WrestleMania 2, King Kong, Bundy, and Hogan, that massive, iconic blue one that they designed, which obviously very appealing for the toy companies to have something like that out, which it did. It done very well, I'm sure, and it's still one of my favourite iconic looks. Um, Like Whereas today, um, the Hell in a Cell is red, for some reason, all red, and um, I don't know, it even hurts your eyes when you look in it, because it's that red that's just so bright, it's like neon all of a sudden, but I like the fact to hear it looks a little bit more dirty, it looks gritty, I, I love that about it, because it, it just brings more atmosphere, this is crazy, this by the way, you could tell when he was lifting him, ain't no way that's going to go down well, um, and this could have been a different story, but look at this, Holy shit, man. That is straight in front of some Vince McMahon and JR. They must have been keeping their fingers crossed that this, this works out. You've got a guy like Shawn Michaels dropping Taker, like, vertical like that. I mean, that is just... And and you've got to remember, think what happened to Austin in this same year with Owen Hart. Like, this is... That is no small feat to do that. Um, I just couldn't believe it. Um... He he did that in this match. That was a real turning point for for Michaels to start getting his his uh, his licking, if you will, like against Taker now. Um, but yeah, that's an amazing amazing moment. I don't know that that happened too many times to Undertaker by a guy like that. I mean, got to be a lot of trust there um, in Sean. But he was the guy to do it. I love there that the camera just like literally uh, went off. Like they haven't. I like it that even on the network we're watching straight from what I was watching because they, they could easily edit stuff like that out. And it would be a shame. I like the fact they've left in the little glitches like that. It's cool. I think there are a few things that I've noticed on the network. They they do.